Live from the Elite Ringside Network, this is Smack Talk with Max Beatty and Spencer Hard. What's going on, guys? It's Spencer Hart, Max Beatty. This is Smack Talk here on the Elite Ringside Network. Uh, here to cover the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Hi, Max. Hi, Spencer. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I've had better days. I've had worse days. Been thinking a lot about WrestleMania, obviously. Yeah. So let's start out before we get into Smack. Or yeah, before we get into SmackDown. Let's uh, recap a little bit of WrestleMania. I know Nate did his WrestleMania NXT review uh, Sunday night, but it was like 12.30 in the fucking morning. and um, So I just wanted to get some preliminary thoughts on WrestleMania. Uh, I know for you and I, we both needed a change of pants during the Raw tag team titles. Um, <laughs> uh, we needed the new pants for when the Hardy Boys came back. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, oh my God, there was a part of me, even though I was saying from last week, yeah, there's no way they're going to fucking legal issues or not. They're not going to do the delete thing. I like the fact that they're able to do a couple little things like, you know, in his promos, Matt will throw in wonderful <laughs> and his, and his uh, broken Matt accent, his broken Mac accent. Um <laughs> And he'll let they'll let him do the uh, delete or at least start the delete chant. But and I, that's probably all they're going to legally be allowed to do. Um, and, I mean, if eventually they're allowed to do more, then that's going to be until then. But holy fuck, shit! I mean, the match afterwards. Oh god, it, it it was kind of exactly what it needed to be. It was very for a, a quote unquote extreme ladder match for a title. It was very you've seen this formula before, but it's the fucking Hardys, so it's a really good formula. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then winning was... Oh, I know a lot of people were really salty, and normally I would be too about, you know, two, you know, former guys coming in and blah, 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 winning the titles, blah, blah, blah. But for fuck's sake, they've completely reinvented themselves. They've propelled themselves to their highest level of pro- popularity since probably WrestleMania X7. And, <laughs> fuck it. It was beautiful match of the night, honestly. And them winning th- their debut is the second biggest moment of the night. I completely agree. Um, that under you know Undertaker's retirement, it's his retirement. People, he's done. He's done. Yeah, I'm, there's no speculation. There's no he's going to be back next. No, he's done. No, he done. I gotta say, I've been watching wrestling for 26 years. And he's been around for, you know, in some capacity, Undertaker, me and Mark Callis as part of the second uh, skyscrapers in WCW. Um, he's been around that whole time. So he's been a fixture. Um, and I love The Undertaker. So I won't lie, when I rewatched it at home, I got really choked up. I, I, I was full on crying. It's, yeah. a, it's a heavy moment. And I can't believe I'm going to say this. But Monday night made me appreciate it all the more. It made me love what they're doing. Yes. Um, he is I, the Roman he should be. He's the guy who finally realized, you know, I've main evented WrestleMania three times. I'm a multi-time world champion, and I just retired the fucking Undertaker. Why the shit should I care about pleasing you people? Yeah. This is my yard. It was, uh, it was fucking baller. It was beautiful. It's the greatest ten minutes of Monday Night Raw ever. Um, I mean, yeah, seriously. I did. I did the raw review last night with AJ, um, and he said it great. It was the, the greatest ten minutes uh, opening of Monday Night Raw ever, and it, and it featured the greatest promo ever. It was just five words: "This is my yard now." Uh, <laughs> and then he just walks away. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I, I, I don't. I guess I'm not excited. I'm. I'm more appreciative of what they seem to be doing for Roman. Um, and I hope it leads to something good. Um, but let's see here. So we had that. We had, um, I want to talk about the placement of the SmackDown women's tag, uh, tag team. Uh, no, the, the SmackDown women's championship. I'm drunk already. It's been five minutes and 
He's already <laughs> off the rails. Put down the bottle, Spencer. You're already gonna fall. Damn, I'm sorry. Um, okay, honestly, the match itself was nothing. It was five fucking minutes mm-hmm. for crying out loud. Maybe it was six. I don't know. To be honest, all the match it doesn't matter. I hate to say that it's wrestling. It's WrestleMania. I hate to say that, but the match didn't matter. All that mattered was Naomi's entrance, which looked fucking dope at night. Yeah. Naomi winning the title. And I'm just going to say that as someone who for the past couple months has become a big Naomi fan, mm-hmm. that was fucking amazing. Her getting a huge WrestleMania moment. I, It's the kind of thing where I can completely forgive the match. Yeah. That being uh, said, if you're going to have it be that short, considering WrestleMania was basically one giant seven-hour show. Ugh. Maybe it should have been on the pre-show. Maybe they could have gotten more time. I, I know. I know. But still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And especially with... Let's see here. The Undertaker... The, the match with Reigns lasted... 20, 20 minutes? Maybe more? The Goldberg-Lesnar um, match was... Five, four minutes, 44 seconds. Um, wait, it just see weird. We had all this momentum, and then after the Hardy Boys picked up the the tag belts, it just felt like the show kind of like died, in my opinion. It kind of did, and a lot of people have been saying that, that the second half really didn't live up to the first half. I mean, there were moments. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, I loved Lesnar versus uh, um, Brock. Oh, that, I did too. I mean, sorry. Brock versus uh, Goldberg, yeah. I mean, it was five minutes, yeah, but you know what? It was kind of everything you would have wanted from them back in uh, at WrestleMania 20 condensed into that time. And I'm sorry, the spear through the barricade and Brock Lesnar leaping a spear. <laughs> Fuck you, that match was, am- I don't care. That match was amazing. I don't even care. And, I mean, Tri- Triple H versus Seth was, it was okay. It was, it was way too long. You could have cut like 10 minutes from it. It would have been fine. And I really love how we need a hold harmless, you know, match. We need, you know, because he, he, his leg and it, you can't have it be sanctioned because his leg is so fucked up. And Triple H spent like the better part of 30 fucking minutes targeting his fucking leg. And then on the next night on Raw, he's in a match. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I can't, I can't. I just, also, I love you, Seth, but he kind of does do the WWE baby face thing of, oh, time to win the match. Now I don't have to sell anymore. Yep. But it was, it was good. It was good. Ray Wyatt versus Randy Orton can go fuck itself. Just, See, just go <laughs> fuck itself. For those of you who follow along with what happened with Nate and I, um, that match, the SmackDown women's uh, belt, and the, what was the other one we differed on? Uh, oh, John Cena and The Miz. Um, those are the only three matches we differed on. Uh, so... Randy Orton picks up the win, and I just jump up. I'm like, yeah, wait, what? What? Why? I mean, the match itself was a SmackDown match, and I don't mean that to be an insult, but I mean, everyone knows that very few wrestlers are willing to, as the um, Revival's theme song would say, go hard all day, all night. You kill yourself that way. So on TV, Mm -hmm. they pull it back a little bit. And, of course, your brain adjusts, you know, for that quality standard. So an amazing TV match might only be eh, good on a pay-per-view. This would have been a – it would have been a spectacle on SmackDown. At WrestleMania, it's, oh, I haven't seen an overhead projector since fucking high school. Thanks, Bray Wyatt. Thanks, AV Club. I just (laughs) – and I'm sorry, just look, I know I was stoked about Randy winning the Royal Rumble – And I know I was stoked about the potential eventually of him and Wyatt facing off. But now that we actually have 13-time world champion Randy Orton, I kind of want to cry. 
because Randy Orton is, to quote Brandon Stroud, I've never seen a wrestler who is so bad at a particular pay-per-view event. Randy Orton is the worst at WrestleMania. At WrestleMania, he is a literal toilet, end quote. Mm. <laughs> the match was a fucking dumpster fire. Fuck that match. Yeah. And the yeah. main event, don't get me wrong, I love that Reigns was basically wrestling kind of with that attitude I described before, and that fucking spear through the table, huh, yeah. and the ending, you know, Taker's retirement, all wonderful moments, and I'm completely willing to overlook that that match was the worst fucking thing I've seen on a WrestleMania in four years. Yeah. I'm sorry, that is the worst WrestleMania match I've seen from The Undertaker in like four or five years. Holy shit. Yeah, and it wasn't necessarily just him. I mean, it was slow. I, it was, yeah. There was the spot through the table or the Roman couldn't table even and, pick him up for the reverse tombstone spot. Yeah, they tried twice. Um. Oh God, I mean, and uh, I just, you know what? You've heard me bitch and complain about WrestleMania 30, the the WrestleMania 30 streak ending match. I like more than that match, but. I'm willing to overlook it because of the direction they're taking Roman, because of the spear through the table, and out of respect for The Undertaker, because that retirement segment had me bawling. Oh, yeah. That was I'm tough sorry, to watch. I, I haven't gone back and watched it yet, but I, I, I'm assuming that when I do... Oh, I'm... I just... I gotta give him respect for it, so I'm willing to overlook the deficiencies of the match. Yeah. But WrestleMania 33 was... When I walked out of uh, the bar that we watched it at, I was pretty surly. I was ready to write this off as another. I, I was like 27 pissed. Yeah. But honestly, now it's not a bad WrestleMania. It it's was not a lot a good better than last year's. Oh, God, yeah. But I think I actually have the perfect way to describe my feelings on this WrestleMania. Okay. It's not a bad WrestleMania. It's not a good WrestleMania. It's a WrestleMania. That's fair. <laughs> it just, yeah. it was WrestleMania. And you know what? I can't, one thing I can't deny, I really fucking dug the setup for the stage and the whole mini ring above the actual ring. That's fucking tight. Yeah, it was. And I don't care what it says. The ramp being eight years long fucking grew on me, okay? It was <laughs> awesome. Seth lit it on fuck. Seth <laughs> just comes out and tri Triple H is like, I got a bunch of cops to drive me to the ring. What's up now? And Seth Rollins is like, whatever, bitch. The floor is lava. <laughs> I got to give a shout out to the bartender at uh, Max Bar in Stevens Point. Uh, he said it perfectly when Naomi was doing her entrance at the top of the ramp, and then she, you know, she does that slide a little bit down the down the ramp. He said it would have been perfect if they greased that thing. She just slid all the way down. <laughs> Honestly. I kind of want them to do another big ass ramp for a WrestleMania, like, and say she's the, you know, you, obviously for some shit like this, make her a baby face, but actually have it be just long enough to make her slide down, be kind of cool, but just short enough so that she wouldn't die at the end. Just do it. It'd be the, it'd be, aw imagine her current entrance doing that. Mm hmm. Oh my! I mean, the ramp was way too long. Either she wouldn't have gotten the momentum, or she would have flown off a side, or just would have fucking brained herself when she hit the bottom. But fuck though that. And I'm sorry, they were smart, especially when Taker came up and then his exit in the middle of the ramp. That mm -hmm. was cool. Yeah, I On mean, you, next year, you, next year, you know, the ramp, you know, the WrestleMania 34 is in New Orleans. They're gonna have Ooh. the ramp start in Baton Rouge. <laughs> so with that uh, with that we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back and we are going to recap the Smackdown after Mania and then make some predictions for the Superstar Shakeup that's coming next week uh, that's next here on the Elite Ringside Network what is going on guys this is the Loose Cannon Nate the Effing Great here to tell you about a great company known as AJsBelts.com why are they so great you ask well let me tell you they have every single championship belt that you can imagine from classic championships to modern nice championships hell even they do mma championships they have great deals on championship belts 
And I know what you're thinking. What if you can't afford them right now? No problem. They have a great layaway program as well as if you go through PayPal credit, you can get your championship belts right away. AJ's belts, the proud sponsors of the Squared Circle Podcast. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Spencer Hart from the Elite Ringside Network. Wanted to let you know about some amazing news. You can now listen to all of our great programming on the new Satchel Podcast Player for your Android and iPhones. Here's the deal: while you're listening to us on Satchel, you. 